and we are live and we are going. Hello there, my materialistic minions. Me, Bo Shevasu here with a new and improved version of the tactic clip. This is going to go in your hair. No, I'm just kidding. What are you talking about? You can't put this in your hair. TSA safe. Yeah, I'm going to get all sorts of emails from people. Hello, I am Bo Shevasu. I just wanted to put a face to the product, so to speak. Uh, I back a few things on Kickstarter here and there, not through this particular account, actually a different account. Uh, and I have found with some of these Kickstarters, you don't really see the people's faces. It's just kind of this faceless person. And I really just kind of wanted to give some authenticity to Tacticlip and also give you some really cool behind the scenes uh, little tidbits about, uh, well, the design process and uh, what we have been through. And uh, when I say we, it's me and a handful of other people who have helped field test this tactic clip thing. Mostly it's my own eccentric mind. Do you ever have these shower thoughts? You're in the shower and you're just like, you know what, that multi-tool hair clip, I could design a much, much better version. And I bet it's gonna excite a lot of people out there. So let me use a real world example. So this little uh, raptor claw type, knife, um, typically I would carry something like this. But I do a lot of traveling. I actually run a nonprofit film studio and since 2011, we have designed and produced films for other nonprofits. So that means I'm always in airports, whether they are domestic airports here in the United States or whether they're abroad. And if you've ever been through any kind of uh, customs or border guards in foreign countries, mainly Africa, <laughs> ah, they think you're a spy. <laughs> I've been accused of being a spy many times. And so to help me through that, I have, as you can see right there on my shirt, oh, uh, product placement. This is the tactic clip, and this will help me convince them that I am not a spy because I don't have any tools like this, for example, which when you unfold it all the way, the, this is a little um, a pair of scissors that I got from a, a Chinese website. And I would carry something like this because as a videographer, you're always, you know, you need a bunch of tools to work with. That, that it would not go over so well going through security, even though they're supposed to allow scissors that are under, I think it's two or three inches in length. I don't know. If anybody's out there who works with TSA, let me know. There's another little thing right here. See, these, these may just seem like, oh, they're scissors. They'll go on my keychain. No big deal. Well, if they even come undone, there we go. Uh, there's actually a substantial blade on that that is rather sharp. And so all of these different things I, I have been grappling with, and I just wanted something like a hair clip. Check out this hair clip. This is just a normal everyday hair clip. And I thought, what if we can build this idea of, I don't want to say a cutting tool because the tactic clip itself is not razor sharp. And a lot of people are like, well, if it's a knife, it's going to cut my hair. Exactly. We don't want to cut beautiful women's hair or men out there. If you have a man bun, uh, if you do have a man bun, we might have to have a talk, uh, an intervention later, but that's okay. If you can grow one, more power to you. I can't. My hair is much too thick. I look like a Q-tip if my hair grows out. Uh, so I'm not jealous of man buns. But anyway, back to tactic clip. So this little serrated edge right here is not actually razor sharp. Uh, if I were to rub this on my finger, it would eventually cut me. It does cut through zip ties. I've tested it on that. Uh, but as for the actual, like if I were to put my finger on that, uh, it's not gonna cut my skin, nor would it, would it cut hair. So. It's as safe as a regular hair clip, which is why it's called a hair clip, not a knife. Now, it is also a multi-tool because it has a multitude of tools, multiple tools. There we go, multi-tool. And uh, so this little point right here, that is sharp, so be careful. I mean, obviously it's a little point in the same way that it would be sharp. No, no, bad, bad example. But anyway, this does cut through tape. It's not gonna be a self-defense tool. So if you guys think that you're just gonna hide this in there and be so precise to slice someone's you know, jugular with this thing, it, you're gonna have better luck just using you know, tiger claws and just smashing that into the perpetrator's face. Uh, and to worry about fumbling with something like this, I would not recommend this to be used as a self-defense tool. Now with all of the other uses that you would use this for throughout the day, 
it's going to come in handy because I am living proof. Now, I'm sorry if I'm uh, you know preaching to the choir right here, but uh, I was, uh, oh boy, was it yesterday? I had a big blister pack. You know those plastic blister packs that you get at Target or Costco? And oh, they're just so obnoxious. And you're looking around for a steak knife. I used this thing and I went one, two, three, and I just scored it right across the thick, thick plastic and it broke open and I was able to access my video game. Now, that would be a fantastic use of this tactic clip. Yeah, this isn't that fun. Now, if in fact you have something like this, it's not necessarily going to be a perfect substitute <laughs> for for obvious reasons. I mean, look at them. This is this is like a little baby. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so these these knives are very very fun. Uh, however, I'm going to show you something really quickly here. Uh, be aware because uh, these spring-loaded knives like this that kind of go up or assisted open, not spring-loaded because a switchblade is considered illegal in the United States and many other countries. But if you have something like this, I'm actually going to show you right here. I'm going to pop it into my pocket like so. Let's remove the pen for, uh, for simplicity's sake. And uh, if you look very carefully on this guy, when I am walking along, it actually, and you can't quite see it, but I'm going to slowly pull it out. It actually deployed in my pants, right? And so you're like, oh, man, I need my, my, my keys in my right pocket. And you reach into your pocket, and now you've lacerated yourself because of a poorly designed knife. So I appreciate good design. So when it comes to testing these things over and over and over again, we have put Tactic Clip through so many tests. Uh, one such test was actually the Spartan race. Are you familiar with the Spartan race? It's a mud run. Think of a giant obstacle course uh, race for, for adults. And it's uh, 25 obstacles. And this one in particular was over eight miles. It was in Utah. And I used this thing. I put it in my, my backpack because I was the rabbit camera. I film for... Um, uh, NBC sports and things like that. Basically, I'm out on the trail with a GoPro running amongst the elite athletes. It's a really fun gig. <laughs> so consequently, I need to think ultralight. I can only afford maybe an extra battery and I can't lug along something like this. I wish I could and some of you are strong enough that you can carry a giant machete with you. Would you like to see the machete? Here, I got this one in Honduras, one moment. So this one right here, um, uh, yeah, you can't see over there, but uh, I have magnets all over my wall and weapons stuck up there. No, you want to see my weapons, don't you? <laughs> I'm not a violent person, I promise. And I'm not uh, on cocaine. A lot of you might think I'm like, wow, how many cups of coffee has he had? Um, actually, just one cup of coffee today. And it was half calf too. Uh, full caffeine makes me anxious. But anyway, back to the weapons wall. Check it out over here. So uh, I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to put this guy right back there. And the cool thing about these weapons is that, as I mentioned, there's magnets on the wall. So I can just pull this off and defend myself. Check this out. This is rather interesting. So previously I mentioned that I did nonprofit film work all around the world. And I actually went to Burkina Faso, a small little landlocked country in West Africa. And I got this there. Check it out. It's carved out of wood. And then the actual metal is really, really sketchy. It's actually incredibly sharp. I don't know how they got an edge on this, but it almost looks like it was a piece of a car. Uh, look at how rusty that is. And right next to it is actually a farming tool type instrument, this guy right here. And this is more so designed for, you know, cutting down uh, grasses and things of that nature. You've probably actually seen similar style tools in Okinawa, which isn't that interesting how, um, you know, although you're worlds apart, you still see similar style tools um, amongst farming equipment, even though Arguably, both of these cultures grew up completely isolated from each other. And yet, within these isolated villages, they still have similar type tools like this. Like, like this is something straight out of Japan, but it's from Burkina Faso, West Africa. Uh, so that's why I personally like weapons, is that because uh, they tell you so much about the culture. And uh, this one in particular was an agricultural type culture in West Africa. And uh, so it kind of makes you wonder, well, what does a tactic clip tell us about 
our culture? Well, uh, it's a hair clip, so vanity. <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, uh, it's a smart tool. It's very minimalist. It's lightweight. And I, I consider uh, the people back in this project to be a very um, smart type audience. Um, they're not obviously going to pack around something like this to open up an Amazon.com box. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> isn't that interesting? I wonder what the tactic clip will actually say about us. Uh, oh, this tool right here, this, uh, <laughs> funny story about this one. This is from Rwanda. It's, uh, it's a machete, and uh, I was so excited because I saw all the villagers having this traditional Rwandan blade. Isn't this wicked looking? Uh, in Sierra Leone, the other side of Africa, they call this a cutlass. Uh, or Kutlas. Uh, it's an it's a interesting dialect that they have. But anyway, so this guy, if you look very, very carefully, it actually says, made in China. I was so disappointed after I bought this. I was like, I want a traditional blade from a traditional culture there in Rwanda. <laughs> it's, it's, it's made in China. I mean, I could have just flown to China and got this thing. But again, that says a lot about their culture the fact that Rwanda is a landlocked country. And so they can't afford uh, cheap import exports. You know, everything has to be flown in. So they have to get like the bottom, bottom dollar. So they're deferring to countries like China, for example, to somehow, you know, freight train these things in, in bulk. Uh, so isn't that interesting? Yeah, made in China, traditional Rwandan blade. Go figure. But anyway, there are my... Uh, oh, wait, 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 does it go this way? Oh, no, wait, this way. And, oh, let's see if it stays. It does stay. So once again, there are magnets on the wall. If, uh, if you choose to put magnets on your own wall, and you can then put your tactic clip up on there, and you display amongst all the weapons. I got all sorts of things in there. That one's from Nepal. Uh, oh, you're probably looking at the nunchucks, aren't you? You want to see my nunchucks? Okay, so these are actually not from... A foreign country, even though you could say, oh, they're from Okinawa because they are nunchucks. Well, these are telescoping nunchucks. I love innovative type designs and tools, hence why we actually you know, spearheaded the tactic clip. But anyway, uh, shameless plug aside, these are um, telescoping nunchucks. So they look like itty bitty cute little nunchucks. You can stick them in your pocket. And then when you feel like Napoleon Dynamite, you can whip these things out and they telescope out like that. They are metal. Listen to this. Yeah, so they hurt. The thing with flail weapons is that when you're going around like this, if you mess up at all, like if you hit yourself in the head, it hurts bad. And in case you can't tell, I hit myself in the head one too many times with nunchucks. But these are actually my favorite weapon. Not that they're very practical, not that you're going to have these in your back pocket, um, you know, walking down a dark alleyway and you have to defend yourself, but simply because they're fun. Uh, they're just a really fun weapon. It's almost a cross between juggling and, but it's, it's fused with a weapon. Uh, so just be careful when, in fact, you do get a, a pair of nunchucks. Um, if in fact you do choose to defend yourself with it, when you flail out like this, and if you miss your opponent, that same amount of force that you intended to strike your opponent with, if you miss, it's coming back to hit you. So that's why I wouldn't necessarily recommend nunchucks. Uh, also, interesting factoid, did you know that police at one point in history in the United States, I think it was in California, they considered nunchucks instead of batons. So they were like this close to actually walking around with, with nunchucks. I know, isn't that awesome? Uh, because you can do a lot of things with this. You can you know, uh, subdue an assailant or opponent, or you can put it around the wrist like this, and you can actually drag them along. There's a lot of really innovative things that you can do with nunchucks. If you're wondering about these, these were actually a wedding present that I got for my groomsmen. Uh, so that's why I got them, and I had to get a pair for myself. Uh, so on here, it actually says Bo and Liz, 52607. So yeah, I've been married since 2007. Isn't that nice? And, uh, you know, everybody's getting like socks or watches, which are wonderful gifts for your groomsmen. Uh, but nunchucks, right? Right, 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 right. All right, so that is it, my... Oh, 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 wait, 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 keep that on there. Woo, you were waiting for that to fall, weren't you? All right, back to Tactic Clip. That's it, guys. I just wanted to give you... Uh, 
a bit of um, philosophy behind the tactic clip, why it was designed, the eccentric mind behind the tactic clip. And um, uh, this one has gotten a lot of wear and tear out of it. Uh, I would say that this thing has been opened and closed over 500 times so far. And it's still working. It's still going strong. Uh, if you have had a chance to check out how I turn this into an oil lamp, there's a video there on the Kickstarter page. And uh, hopefully you guys found this helpful. Oh, fun last little thing. If you guys are in a country other than the United States, meaning that you use the metric system, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. We Americans love the, uh, the foot and the inches and the yards. But if you are into the metric system, a uh, fun little update on this guy. I've actually been corresponding with the factory and we are adding a new addition to this, which on the back side, eventually you will see a little metric ruler. So in centimeters and meters, on the back side because that's just blank real estate. And so I contacted him and I was like, hey, how much would it cost to you know print another ruler on the other side? I actually wanted to print other things on the back side too, but at that point the price for this would have gone up and we really want to make this affordable and accessible to everybody, uh, especially people in foreign countries who may in fact find this incredibly necessary. As you can tell, my heart really goes out to people in developing countries and, and helping them. And so I wanted to make something that I could actually bring with me out on the mission field. Just be like, hey, this will not only help keep your hair back when you're out in the rice paddies, farming and things like that, but it might actually come in handy. Uh, so to make it economical enough to actually take to developing countries, uh, that's that hugely resonates with my heart. If you're curious about the films that I put together, uh, we are with Knock Studio, K-N-O-K. -K. I'm actually going to show you a sticker right there, K-N-O-K. -K. Oh, and there we go. And, uh, yeah, if you go ahead and look at knok.org, you'll see oh, boy, a bunch of films and things like that from all over the world, from Nepal to Cambodia to Africa. I do a lot of traveling. So when I come across innovative designs like the tactic clip or I think it up myself, I get really, really excited about pushing this out there to everybody. That's it. God bless you guys. Hope that you enjoyed this little behind the scenes tour of the tactic clip and to put a face to the Kickstarter. This is going to be live for the next 48 hours, I believe so, which is kind of lame that uh, Kickstarter doesn't allow you to access this later on. So if you saw this, Wow, you are one of the few who has actually seen this before it is taken down. All right, that's it. I will catch you later.